That's why she was there. Okay? Now, I know that I, you know, went in and talked to the sisters a certain kind of way, but, you know, some of you all are special. And I don't know if you can be helped. Like, you know, can you be saved from your mental situation, whatever it is you're dealing with? I don't know. It's like some of you all may be what they call beyond salvation. Like you can't even be saved. You can't even be helped because, you know, you know, got so bitter, you know, got so mad, you know, got so angry with what happened in your life that can't nobody even get to you, like say nothing to you, that you can't even get no help because you won't hear nothing from nobody, especially a black man. You don't want no black man telling you nothing. Squash all that. And that's the main one you're talking about you're trying to get with. You know what? In my philosophy in relationship, the way I see relationship is the number one fundamental key to a successful relationship is communication. That is my pet peeve. If you're in a relationship with me, we need to have communication. We need to have communication. That means I need to be able to talk to you and you hear what I'm saying. You hear the spirit, the spirit in what I'm speaking to you, just beyond word. Then when you speaking to me, I need to hear the spirit of what you're trying to say just beyond words. I need to be able to listen to you. All right. Now, my truth is my truth. It may be batch, crate, you, you know what I'm saying? But that's my truth. And you have to respect that. And vice versa. Your truth is your truth. And it may be just batty, but I have to respect that because that is your truth. If you communicate that to me, then I got to deal with it as such. Your truth, your reality. All right? But in communication... Every single thing can be worked out. Everything. Everything. When you can communicate to each other. You all notice that most relationships, when they have fallen apart, you can't talk to each other. Y'all notice that? Like some place, sometimes you be watching them with divorce court. Some of that stuff be true. Some of it be television. But when they get to a point, they can't talk to each other no more. She hollering at him. He hollering at her. He mad with him. He mad with her. No more communication. When I was a part of the Hebrew community, which I'm not anymore, 17 years now, yeah, I was a priest and I counseled couples, right? The number one thing that I began to see after so many sessions with these people was that their issue was communication. They couldn't talk. Now the brother could tell, he talked to me and tell me everything he wanted me to know. The sister, she talked to me and tell me everything he wanted to know. And then I told the brother, I said, but, but my man, wait a minute, now hold it. What you just shared with me, you need to share that with your wife. It'll work for you. It'll fix your problem, because she don't know that. All right? And then the sister, same thing. She'll tell me all this, dust, dust, dust. But then I say, baby girl, why, why, why is it that you ain't uh, share this with your husband? Well, I can't talk to him. That's the first thing they say. I can't talk to him. He won't listen. You see that? So if you got a problem right here, right? The first thing you got to be able to do is what? Talk to each other. Listen to each other. You don't even need counseling. You can sit there yourself and talk to her without getting mad as hell and, you know, you blowing up, she blowing up. Now you're arguing and screaming because you're too daggone mad and arrogant and frustrated or whatever you got going on in your head that you can't talk to each other. You want to slap the taste out of her mouth and you want to kick him in the balls and all kind of hellish stuff because you're mad and, and don't even realize that the reason why he leave the toilet seat up and that's what y'all fighting about the toilet seat <laughs> i'm gonna leave y'all alone i had enough of y'all uh -huh, go on about your business because it'd be real dumb stuff you be fighting over it don't even be that significant you know what i'm saying yeah so hey Y'all keep on fighting and raising hell with each other. You're going to look at black women ain't going to have nobody because the white men looking and seeing what you're doing. And they were like, oh, no, bring that shit over here. No, no, you stay on over there with, bruh. Because he got enough with 
with his Karens and Beckys and Salads and Jill making all demands on him and, and taking all his stuff after the divorce. That's in America. In a mother nation, like, don't bring that shit over here. Y'all stay over there in America with that. Oh, we cool over here with our $2 dresses. And y'all run around because the brother can't buy you a, a six, seven, eight thousand dollar Birkin bag, and you put all kind of pressure on him to pay your daggone bills, and you don't want to do nothing. I watched a little Filipino girl down in, in uh, Florida. The brother uh, owns a tire repair shop. This little 90 pound girl is changing tire in a dress. Because she said, This is my husband. He need help. We busy today. So she came from behind the desk and ran out there. Customers lining up, tires need to be changed. She know because he done taught her how to do it. And she throwing the tires up on the rack with her little bit of self and changed the damn tire and rolled it over to the car. I'm like, well, I be down. Huh? With her little $3 dress on. And she looking at the camera smiling. No, oh, she said, my husband, he, she said, we busy today. So everybody working full out, lined up cars, customers. This little bit of 90 pound Filipino went out there grabbed the doggone wrench, took the tire, and, um, and manhandled it up on the, on the, uh, the, the tire chain, hit the button, broom, took the tire off, chain, threw another one on there, hit it, filled it up, snatched it off, and rolled it over there to the car. So I'd be down. But you want your dude to pay for everything. You don't want to do nothing. You don't want to do dilly squat. Okay. See, you know what? Not only are your bad attitude, your boss bitch attitude is causing men to turn away from you. These other women are getting over real easy. They ain't even got to put hardly no work in because the brothers is showing up and these sisters is watching you on these videos. These other women from the other nation is watching you black girls in America with your boss bitch attitude, making all these unbelievable demands on these brothers. And these girls walking around with $2 dresses on happy is a sis in a boys club. And y'all mad because the brother can't buy you a $6,000 Birkin bag. So what these girls in their $2 dresses is doing is just being quiet, at peace, feminine, massage your brother and cook for him. And you know what she get on return? A great damn man that you sisters begging for the Birkin bag in them big ass dresses that you can't get. Because you've been played out the damn pocket. You've been monstrously played out the pocket. And don't even know it. Don't even know it. If any of you still listening to me, you good. You got a chance. But I bet you most of y'all cut it off on the, on the first part. Because you didn't want to hear it. Y'all got to a point, man, where can't nobody tell you nothing. And, and you know what? You losing. You sisters are losing very bad. And don't even see it. It's like you in the ring and you done got your bell rung, you know, the, the life done hit you and now it, you dizzy. Your ears is ringing, you're seeing stars, you're still on your feet, right? But your opponent is about to land what they call a haymaker and knock your ass out the ring. Now you're gonna be over there in the crowd lost. Hoping somebody come with a little smelling salt to wake you up. But the way you perform in the ring, if you get your ass knocked out of the ring, everybody like, leave her out there. Hell with her. Next. You better, you better shut that shit down. Because you're going to look up. When you hit 40, man, I saw this white girl on the Philip Scott show. He was showing this white woman. She 40. And she's sitting there crying. Nice looking girl. Thick, nice looking girl, right? White woman. She's sitting there crying because why? She ain't got nobody. She ain't married, right? Uh, and she have no kids. She on her own. And when she got sick, she had to call her mama. But she 40 now. And just like she said, who want a 40 year old, slightly overweight woman with nothing, no kid, a little, little job. But see what it is when you was young and you had that banging body and you thought you was the only one in the world with a coochie and you was just, just acting a damn fool. Haughty, sassy. And then at 40 done caught up with you and you done lost that boss body. You come in looking like that. You know what I'm saying? Nobody want to deal with you. And then you're mad as hell. 
But when we was trying to talk to you, you ain't want to hear nothing. Now these brothers with these other women and having little babies and doing their thing, man. That's all it is, you know. It's just like the last video I'm going to tell you about Philip put up. He showed this sister raising holy hell. I mean, she, wow. Outside the house, it was a brother that she had, had a baby by. She had like three babies. Right? From three different men. And one of the brothers had came to bring some food for the baby that he had had with the sister. All right? Do you know this black woman pitched a bitch? I mean, unfreaking believable how this woman hollered and screamed at this man. Why? Because he brought food only for his baby that he and her had. She had them other two babies from other two different dudes. So it's three guys in her in her orbit. Three babies, three different guys. She done laid down and gave the cookie to, and two of them boys ain't even showed up to do nothing. This one brother came to, to, to get the food, bring the food for his baby. And it was so daggone embarrassing. She didn't let him house. She, she didn't even let him in the house. She stepped outside the house and cussed this brother to a Sunday. You talking about, you know how the old folks used to say, cussing like the sailor? Hell, she cussed like the admiral of the ship at that brother. And he wasn't an older brother, you know, he was a young brother. But I commended him for bringing food for his child. All right, I gave him that much credit. Now, here's the problem that I saw, that the sister, you know, blew all the way around the board. The young man brought food for his child. He had enough compassion and, you know, responsibility that he thought to bring food for his child that he had had by this woman. Now, the thing that the woman being so exceedingly dumb and stupid because she was hollering and screaming and disrespecting and embarrassing the brother outside the house like the Negro, dumb Negro woman does, the old boss bitches, and I'm talking about you real bad, that she didn't realize that this young man had enough wherewithal to bring food to his one baby that they had together. The thing that I was thinking about was if the young man got that type of compassion that he would do whatever he got to do, bring food to his one child, if that dumb heifer had a sense enough to be a more feminine, peaceful sister, let the brother in the house, sit him down, thank him for bringing the food, you know, give him a glass of water, juice or something, a beer, whatever, and get him in there in a more relaxed state and simply ask him, let him know, look, my other two children don't have any food. The two dudes, they ain't did nothing. I can't depend on them. You know, they ain't brought no food through and they hungry. Bruh, I'd like to ask you, is it possible that you can get some food from the mother too also? I, I know they're not yours. I'm just asking. Can you do it? If she had a, approached the brother like that, I guarantee you he would have got that food. I don't have no doubt in my mind whatsoever that young man would have bought food for them other two. But she was so hellified and evil and wicked and hollering and screaming, that's the damn food outside the house. He still had the food. She hadn't even took the food out of his hand for the child that she, he did bring the food for. Okay, so just like I saw this on the video over in Israel, don't you know these other women in these other countries are seeing black women act like that? So what happened? When them brothers step off the plane in all these other countries, Australia, Philippines, South America, Russia, hell, even, even China, you know, shit, Japan, these women know what the brothers done been through in America with you boss bitches and you hard women, black women demanding all kind of shit. And so they just say, hey, I, look, Brother, I got a $2 dress on. I bought, I got a place we can stay at. It's simple, but for now, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Just, just relax. So the brother rolled on up in there. He done got whatever money he could get up out of America. Maybe $5,000 here, maybe $2,000. All right. So the little sister, she, the little woman, she got a place. So he get on up in with his $2,000. He just chill, just relax, you know, do what they do. And then after a while, you know, he get his shit together. He get up and get to grinding. 
All right, he feels so relieved. He ain't got to worry about the damn police, uh, you know, profiling him out. He ain't got to worry about the white women acting the fool because the brother's sitting out talking on the phone out here in Israel by the beach. He ain't got to worry about the sister reporting him from speaking to her because human resources are going to fire him. So he ain't got to worry about none of that. Yeah, so he can walk out now and shit, after you taste this a little bit, you ain't going back to America. Just like the young brother said, hell, he went to uh, Brazil and going to Brazil now has made it very, very difficult for him to deal with a sister in America. And of all places, he living in Atlanta, Georgia. Good googly move. Book of bells like a mofo, running all over the damn place, painted up, fake hair, fake hair, glued on hair, incredibly long fingernails, red hair, blue hair, green hair, purple hair, mixed color, multi, rainbow color hair, and mad as hell with tattoos, smoking weed and doing all kind of shit and hollering and screaming and teeth yellow. Negro, please. So he went down to Brazil. He said, oh, hell no. He said, man, it was one beautiful woman behind the other and all of them was nice. He said, so he finally started dealing with one sister and um, she took him to her house. He sat down. She said he cooked a nice meal and they were just so chill. He said, oh, hell no. So you don't know a nice feminine woman until you get out of America and deal with other cultures that the women are still feminine, compassionate, lovable, kind, all of that. Then you realize, damn, how you been living? All right, so anyway, shit. Man, I say this because I love y'all, but do I think it's gonna change you? Absolutely not. Y'all sisters are going to continue to be exactly who you are until you get old enough to realize you done fucked up. But at that time, it's gonna be too late because you don't want nobody to say nothing to you because you a boss bitch. And the only thing you're gonna do is just take your boss bitch ass over there and be by yourself, walking around to the beach with your bag on your shoulder by yourself. Yeah. If you don't change. And, do, and is it time for you to change? Or do you have time to change? Shit. That's all on you. Depending on what a boss bitch do. You know what I'm saying? That's where y'all talk boss bitch shit. I don't matter where. Woo, the only women in the world talk like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Boss bitch. Shit. <laughs> okay, now, you know, hey, I'm going to close out, whatever. But, you know, hey, man, I, I said all this to you because why? Look, will you believe it or not? I know you don't. I love you a lot, you know? Like brother asked me, man, why you keep up with what's happening in America so much? Because I love y'all, my people. Even though y'all boss bitches is acting a damn fool, I still love you. That's why I said something to you. Shit. Other than that, man, if I didn't, I wouldn't say nothing to hell with you. But that's what you don't never want to happen. For Nubian King to go off the air. Because y'all knucklehead was happy when Kevin Samuel died. And it's a damn shame. Now you clown talking about, oh, so wish Kevin Samuel was here. Why? For what? So you can kill him again? Ignorant ass man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't trying to hear nothing from nobody. The brother trying to tell you what you need to do. You ain't got no grandmamas talking. You don't want them out. You ain't got no uncles talking. You don't want to hear shit. And so who's around to try to tell you something to help you out? But you done got to a point now where this American culture, this Western culture, have created this boss bitch mentality that you know everything and can't nobody tell you nothing and you go to hit, go home by yourself every day and you keep some batteries in the dildo and all by your bed. Now I just